China just nailed their abort test. Perfect landing in two minutes. SpaceX still can't land Starship properly. NASA delayed until 2026. Here's what's crazy. China hasn't done this test in 27 years. Now they're ready for moon missions by 2030 while America's $93 billion program might get canceled. Is the moon race actually over? Let's dive right in. What actually happened in the Gobi Desert? 12.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Complete darkness in the Gobi Desert. Then, boom! A 26-ton spacecraft explodes off the launch pad. But this isn't what you think. This is China's Mengju capsule. Executing the perfect escape sequence. The escape tower fires. Solid rocket motors generate 75 tons of thrust in milliseconds. The capsule shoots skyward like a bullet. Then flips perfectly into position. 20 seconds pass. The tower separates. Parachutes deploy flawlessly. Airbags inflate. Two minutes later, perfect landing in the designated zone. This wasn't just another test. This was China proving they can save astronauts when everything goes wrong. 240,000 miles from Earth. Here's what's shocking. China hasn't attempted this kind of test in 27 years. 27 years, an entire generation of engineers built this system from scratch and nailed it on the first public attempt. While SpaceX was blowing up starships for internet views, China was quietly perfecting technology that actually works. But why should this terrify NASA? Because this test just proves something nobody wanted to admit. The engineering reality nobody talks about. Let's break this down. Most people think spacecraft are just metal tubes that fly through space. Wrong. Mengzhou is a 26 metric ton life support system designed for one mission, keeping humans alive during the most dangerous journey possible. Compare that to SpaceX's approach. Starship weighs over 100 tons empty, needs multiple refueling missions that have never been tested, still can't complete a basic flight without exploding. China built something focused, something tested, something that works. The escape system operates like this. When disaster strikes, you have milliseconds to live or die. The solid rockets generate enough force to lift two elephants straight up, instantly. Your life depends on split-second precision. Every component must work perfectly. The motors, the guidance system, the parachutes, the airbags. One failure equals dead astronauts. China just proved every single system works flawlessly under extreme stress. Meanwhile, NASA's Orion capsule has heat shield problems that delayed Artemis II by years. The heat shield, the part that keeps astronauts alive during re-entry, and it doesn't work properly. SpaceX, they still can't land Starship without it exploding into a fireball. But here's the part that changes everything. The secret mission 22,000 miles above Earth. While everyone watched the desert test, something else was happening that nobody noticed. Two Chinese satellites, Shujian-21 and Shujian-25, currently attempting to dock in geostationary orbit, 22,236 miles above Earth, where satellites stay perfectly positioned over one spot on the planet. Why does this matter? Because orbital refueling is the holy grail of space exploration. It's what makes Mars missions possible. It's what makes lunar bases sustainable. And China is doing it right now. Here's the crazy part. Xu Jian 21 previously grabbed a dead satellite and towed it away like space garbage collection. Then it appeared to run out of fuel and drift uselessly, but suddenly it reactivated, started moving towards Xu Jian 25 with precision maneuvers. This wasn't planned, this was improvisation. Real time problem solving. 22,000 miles from Earth. SpaceX's entire moon landing plan depends on orbital refueling. Starship must dock with tanker ships multiple times to fill up for lunar missions, but they've never actually done this successfully. China just proved they can execute complex docking operations while improvising solutions on the fly. So here's the question that should keep NASA awake at night. If China can refuel spacecraft in orbit better than SpaceX, what else can they do that we can't? The numbers that reveal everything. Let's talk brutal mathematics. China plans moon landings by 2030, six years away. Their timeline isn't wishful thinking, it's systematic engineering. 
Two Long March 10 rockets launch their lunar mission. One carries Mengzhou with three astronauts, the other carries the Lanyo lunar lander. They dock in lunar orbit. Astronauts transfer to the lander, land on the moon, return home. Sound familiar? It's exactly how Apollo worked 50 years ago. But China's doing it with modern technology, modern materials, modern computing power. The brutal comparison? NASA's SLS has flown exactly once in over a decade of development. Cost per launch? $4.1 billion. That's billion with a B. Total program cost so far? Over $93 billion for one successful flight. China's entire human spaceflight program costs less per year than NASA spends on SLS alone. They're achieving more with less because they focus on results instead of politics. SpaceX promised rapid iteration with Starship. Multiple test flights, learn from failures, improve quickly, reality check. After years of testing, they still can't reliably land the vehicle, still can't transfer fuel between ships, still can't keep the heat shield intact. China just proved their crew escape system works perfectly on the first public test in nearly three decades. Which approach sounds more likely to succeed? But there's something even more disturbing about China's progress. The infrastructure game America already lost. While NASA argues about budgets, China has been building the foundation for permanent space operations. The Long March 10 rocket isn't just for moon missions. It's part of an integrated space transportation system designed for everything from space station resupply to Mars exploration. The NE Tiangong Space Station, it's not just a scientific laboratory, it's a testing ground for long-duration life support systems. Every technology they develop for station operations, DILE applies to lunar missions. They're not starting from scratch like we are, they're building on proven systems that work. NASA's approach? The SLS rocket costs so much it can only fly once or twice per year. Each mission takes years to plan and execute. No room for iteration, no opportunity to learn and improve. China's systematic approach means they can sustain momentum regardless of political changes or budget cuts. Every success builds toward the next objective. Here's what's really terrifying. Their abort test wasn't just about crew safety. It was about proving their life support systems work under extreme stress. When you're 240,000 miles from Earth and something goes wrong, your spacecraft becomes your only lifeline home. China just demonstrated they understand this reality better than anyone. The timeline that should panic Washington. Let's examine what happens next. China scheduled additional abort tests for this year. High altitude scenarios at maximum aerodynamic pressure. The most stressful phase of launch. If those tests succeed, China validates their entire crew safety system by 2025. Long March 10 rocket tests begin 2026, 2027. Crewed lunar missions by 2030. That's not optimistic planning. That's realistic engineering based on proven hardware development. America's timeline? Artemis II might launch in 2026. If Orion's heat shield problems get fixed. Artemis III moon landing depends on SpaceX completing orbital refueling. Lunar landing demonstrations? life support systems that don't exist yet. NASA's Inspector General estimates Artemis III won't happen before 2027 at the earliest, and that assumes everything goes perfectly with untested technologies. But here's the factor that could change everything overnight, the economic reality nobody wants to face. China's space program operates under completely different rules than NASA or SpaceX. When Chinese leadership decides something is a national priority, Budgets become unlimited. The entire Apollo program cost $283 billion in today's money over eight years. NASA's SLS program has already consumed over $93 billion for one flight. China doesn't publish space budgets, but industry experts estimate their entire human spaceflight program costs less annually than SLS alone. They achieve more with less because they're not burdened by congressional politics. SpaceX operates efficiently compared to NASA, but they still face private funding constraints and investor expectations. Every Starship explosion costs millions and delays timelines by months. China's approach is methodical, well-funded, focused on results rather than publicity. When something works, they build more. 
When something fails, they fix it quickly and move forward. This structural advantage means China can sustain space program momentum through any political or economic disruption. Can America make the same claim? The truth about what comes next that the successful abort test proves more than technical capability. It demonstrates China has mastered the most critical aspect of human spaceflight, keeping people alive when everything goes catastrophically wrong. Space exploration isn't about getting there first anymore. It's about who can stay there, build infrastructure, establish permanent presence. China's systematic approach suggests they're planning for the long game, not just lunar visits, but lunar occupation. Their satellite servicing demonstrations prove they understand future space operations require in-orbit refueling, repair, logistics support. This isn't theoretical capability. This is operational reality they're demonstrating right now. While SpaceX chases Mars headlines and NASA struggles with budget constraints, China is quietly building the foundation for sustained space operations across the entire solar system. The abort test was just the beginning, a proof of concept for technologies that will support permanent lunar bases, asteroid mining operations, Mars colonies. Here's what nobody wants to admit, based on current progress trajectories. China reaching the moon by 2030 isn't optimistic. It's inevitable. The real question isn't whether they'll get there. The question is, what they'll do once they arrive. Will they establish permanent research stations? Will they begin mining lunar resources? Will they use the moon as a staging ground for Mars missions? And most importantly, when China plants their flag on the lunar surface, will America still be relevant in space exploration? Or will we be watching from Earth, wondering how we lost a race we thought we'd already won? So here's what we learned today. China's abort test wasn't just about spacecraft safety. It was about proving they're ready to dominate space exploration for the next 50 years. While America argues about budgets and delays, China is building the future, methodically, systematically, and successfully. The real question isn't whether they'll reach the moon by 2030. It's whether America will still matter in space when they do. But here's what I want to know. Are we witnessing the end of American space dominance? Or is this the wake-up call NASA and SpaceX needed? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Are you Team America or Team China in this new space race? And if you want to stay ahead of these game-changing developments, hit that subscribe button, because tomorrow's space news is happening today, and Space Corps will be there to break it down for you. The moon race just got real. The question is, are you ready for what comes next? Boeing just lost $13.5 billion to SpaceX. In one devastating blow, their 20-year military space monopoly is over. SpaceX now controls 28 out of 54 of America's most classified launches. We're talking spy satellites, missile defense systems, the stuff that keeps America safe. Boeing went from launching everything to, well, watching from the sidelines. But here's what makes this terrifying. China is racing to deploy 10,000 satellites to dominate space. Who's going to stop them? Only SpaceX has the speed and firepower to fight back. How did this happen so fast? And what does this mean for the future of American defense? Let's dive right in. The empire that ruled space for two decades. United Launch Alliance owned everything, and I mean everything. For 20 years, every spy satellite, every missile warning system, every piece of classified hardware that kept America alive, all flew on ULA rockets. Boeing and Lockheed Martin had built the perfect fortress, their success rate 100% when it mattered most. But perfection came with a price tag that would make your jaw drop. Each ULA launch cost the Pentagon over $400 million. That's more money than most countries spend on their entire defense budget for one rocket. The military paid it because they had no choice. Who else could handle nuclear early warning satellites? Who else had clearance for America's deepest secrets? The answer seemed obvious. Nobody. ULA executives slept well at night, knowing their monopoly was unbreakable. After all, national security isn't something you gamble with, right? You stick with the proven winner, no matter the cost. 
But while they were celebrating, a small company in California was building something that would destroy their empire forever. The startup that dared to dream the impossible. SpaceX was nothing more than Elon Musk's crazy fantasy. Fresh from selling PayPal, Musk walked into aerospace conferences making an outrageous claim. He could cut launch costs by 90%. Industry veterans didn't just laugh. They nearly fell out of their chairs. NASA executives rolled their eyes. Boeing's leadership probably didn't even know SpaceX existed. Here's the brutal truth about impossible dreams. Sometimes they come true in the most devastating way possible. SpaceX's first rocket exploded. Second rocket exploded. Third rocket, you guessed it, exploded. Musk was burning through his fortune so fast, 